Okay, so uh, today we will start on discussing on induced stock in SC machines. Alright, so we'll start on uh, slide 35 out of 48. So hopefully we will finish this around uh, one hour of this today's session. So far we have we have been discussing on uh, AC machinery topic three AC machinery. So we start with simple loop in a uniform magnetic field, which is a uh, which is as you can see we have we have discussed on simple loop in a uniform magnetic field. Which is, as you can see, it's something like that. Eh? Uh, a simple loop, which is a loop that is placed in a uniform magnetic field. We have the, uh, for example, the permanent magnet. Eh? Uh, we place the permanent magnet side by side, and then we place a wire loop in between of that permanent magnet. So from there, we can derive the equation of induced voltage, E in, equals to 2RLB sine omega t. That is for the induced voltage. When we rotate this loop, so we will calculate all, when we calculate all of the segments on this uh, wire loop, then we get induced voltage of E in to, equals to 2RLB sine omega t. And then also when we uh, supply current, so we supply current to this wire loop, which is the, this wire loop is placed inside the uh, magnetic field, the uniform magnetic field. We can also calculate, uh, we can also calculate the torque that is induced in each of the segment. Basically, the effective torque, the net torque uh, induced in this uh, wire loop is torque at the AB side, AB segment, and also the torque induced at the AB, BC, CD, eh, CD segment. Okay, so the torque induced is equals to 2RLB sine theta. Okay, so we have already discussed about this. Eh? We have discussed about this sort of uh, arrangement, which is simple loop in a uniform magnetic field. Okay, so that one was covered in uh, section 3.2, which is this one, simple loop in a uniform magnetic field. And then, uh, a little bit of uh, introduction uh, about the rotating magnetic field, right? Rotating magnetic field is, is, is the RMF, lah. RMF, which is uh, developed because of the three-phase current supplied to a stator. So, we supply the stator with three-phase current. What happened is uh, in the air gap lah, of the stator, in the stator air gap, it will form the uh, magnetic field that is rotating, that is revolving. Okay, so we have discussed a little bit of the concept about the rotating magnetic field in section 3.3. And then in section 3.4, we have also discussed on the induced voltage in the steam machines, which is uh, this one is more to uh, AC machine. Okay, the 3.21 was uh, something like a simplification, uh, a simple representation of the machine, which is uh, we place it a wire loop inside the uh, uniform magnetic field just to discuss on the induced voltage and torque on that segment of the wire loop. But now in this 3.4 uh, section, we have discussed on the voltage inducing AC machine, which is uh, the real, real, real representation of the machine. That we know that the RMF uh, of the stator of the AC machine is behaved like a, a sinusoidal waveform, right? So that rotating magnetic field will induce voltage inside the coil or the wire, uh, uh, the windings of the stator, stator lah, the stator winding. So that is about. Uh, induced voltage in the machine. And then for today's session, we are going to focus on the last part of uh, the discussion of topic three, which is induced torque in a steam machine. Okay, so now we are going to discuss on induced torque in a steam machine. 
which is 3.5 eh? section 3.5 so I'm going to open again uh, page 35 right page 35 okay so we are going to discuss in this uh, topic in this section ST machine under normal operating condition we know that uh, ST machine it has two segment which is rotor side and also stator so stator is the inside part eh? and then sorry stator is the outside part and rotor is the inside part of the AC machine and then both stator and rotor ni, basically we uh, we do windings eh? we do windings of the stator and rotor so basically uh, if you, you have a look at this uh, notes eh? if I can write in some space here we have rotor and then stator okay uh, so for that rotor and stator basically uh, we have some slot on the rotor part and also some slot on the stator something like that lah. Uh, in that slot we will do the windings huh? do the winding for example I'll do the winding for that one I do the winding for that one windings winding 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 that one is stator windings and also we do the rotor windings huh? put the wires okay around the rotor to form the magnetic field so in that case we know that in AC machinery since we uh, do the winding of the stator and rotor so basically that wiring or that winding will form the magnetic field which is rotating magnetic field so we know that it has rotating magnetic field of the stator and also the magnetic field of the rotor okay so that sort of things of discussion okay so uh, the interaction of these two magnetic field meaning that the interaction of uh, rotor magnetic field and stator magnetic field produce the torque will produce the torque okay so rotor magnetic field and stator magnetic field will interact with each other so that it will produce the torque in the machine the torque means the torque applied to the rotor okay so the torque will be experienced by the rotor because of the interaction between two magnetic field which is the magnetic field coming from stator and also the magnetic field coming from the rotor and then uh, if you can imagine it is something like a permanent magnet lah. like a permanent magnet for example we have the permanent magnet as a rotor okay we place that permanent magnet inside of the stator that produce rotating magnetic field what happened is that uh, rotor or that, that permanent magnet will try to follow try to chase the uh, magnetic field that rotates right so that is that sort of interaction between stator and rotor that means that uh, when rotor is spinning or rotating it will also rotate the shaft of the motor okay so that rotor will experience torque because of the RMF developed by the stator magnetic field. Okay, so we can imagine that uh, this construction of the AC machines, we have, uh, as you can see clearly, uh, in this figure provided by Chapman's book, which is the outside uh, area, which is, I'm, I'm showing you this, this is uh, the stator, and the inside part which is this one is the rotor so this rotor is also uh, we have the winding around this rotor we have uh, this sort of uh, wire out from the page okay and we have another wire loop into the page so the wire loop at uh, the first side which is the side one is out of the page and then a wire loop at the second side is the uh, into the page all right and then 
this magnetic field we call it as BS okay BS I think I'll be better it'll be better for me to show you this uh, notes huh? okay if you can have a look at this note okay so basically we have this uh, let me just redraw it uh, page action no it's a pitch Okay, uh, basically, if I can redraw this uh, machine, this is theta, okay, this is theta, and inside of the theta, I have my rotor. So, this rotor is supplied by the current uh, through this wire loop. So, basically, we have some slot, lah, slot like this, okay, macam uh, theta juga has some slot. Okay, to place the wire right so so inside this the air gap of this machine basically as you can see some arrows here which is represent the B which is uh, the flux huh? magnetic flux magnetic flux inside this magnetic field this uh, part as you can see, the arrow is show uh, is from the rotor to the stator, right? On that part. And the bottom part here, the arrow is from the stator to the rotor. Okay, so we can say that this is positive part, positive part of the uh, stator magnetic field, and this is the negative part of the stator magnetic field. And then this stator magnetic field or BS. How does it behave? Okay, how does it behave? Basically, if we, for example, if I write a, a reference point, reference, a reference, which is this line, okay, uh, is, is something the line that uh, like a positive x direction. So this line is, for example, a reference, and then uh, this. This is the instantaneous uh, condition, instantaneous uh, position of the stator magnetic field, the magnetic field. So we can say that uh, this magnetic field, BS, is behave like a sinusoidal function, sine alpha. So B BS is BS as a function of alpha, right? B B as a function of alpha, which is alpha start the spatial uh, alpha is a spatial angle. Huh? So as alpha start from here, which is this is alpha equals to zero, so it rotates. Okay. The magnetic field is some, it looks like it is rotating, right? So at this instant, at this instant, this is BS at maximum. Huh? BS at maximum. So BS max is here. Why BS max is around here? Because uh, at this instant, alpha is 90 degree. Okay. And then uh, another instant here, alpha is 180 degree. And another instant here, alpha equals to 270 degree. So, at th 360 degree rotation, okay, how does the BS looks like? It, it is behave like a sinusoidal function, which is if we plot this BS with respect to alpha, so we will get the sinusoidal function which is at 90 degree for example at pi over 2 
uh, at pi over 2, uh, bs is max, maximum. Okay. At 180 degree, bs is 0, right? At 180 degree, bs is 0. And so and so forth at 270 degree, bs is negative 1. In this case, we have the absolute value of b, bs of b. So, we, we can say that b is maximum. Okay. And then, back to 360 degree, bs is 0 again. So, we can uh, redraw this. I have already redrawn this actually. As you can see, uh, in this figure, right? How do we represent the stator flux distribution? Stator magnetic field, it, it looks like this. So, it has maximum when alpha equals to 90 degree. And then, as you can see, there is no line across this uh, horizontal lines. Huh? No flux lines here. No flux line, meaning that BS equals to 0 at this, this, this instant. Okay. So, we can represent this BS as BS sine alpha. Alright. So, that is the thing that firstly we, we, we should know about the stator magnetic field. Okay. The distribution of the flux around the stator. Alright. Okay. Now, uh, it's about rotor. Okay, now it's about rotor. So similarly for the rotor, we also uh, give current to the rotor using this wire loop. Okay, this is the wire loop. The current flowing I is outside, out of the page, right? I is out of the page. In that segment, huh? in the first segment, I is out of the page. And in another segment, segment 2, I is I into the page. Okay. So, we have two segments to calculate the torque induced. Okay. Which is the first segment and the second segment. In our previous discussion on induced AC, uh, induced voltage in AC machine, we named the stator uh, wire loop as segment A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, right? So in this rotor, rotor windings or rotor wire loop, we we uh, we assume that uh, the first segment which is this segment as the first segment and the other segment as the second segment. So that it is easier for us to represent F in 1, F in 1, okay, and F in 2, which is the force that will be induced when we supply current, all right? So when we supply current that pass through this wire loop of the rotor, what happens is the torque will be induced on that rotor, all right? So, we are going to uh, calculate uh, the force that is induced at each of the segment of wire loop of the rotor. But before that, uh, we can uh, actually know the direction of the force that is induced on that wire. For example, in the first segment, I name it as conductor number 1. In the first segment, conductor 1 here, we know that the force which is uh, the force vector is to that direction which is perpendicular to direction of B. Why is this direction B is to that direction? Because from our past discussion that B, the stator magnetic field, let's say, uh, for example, if I'm going to use this uh, figure, B is pointing to that direction which is representing this this arrow okay so that is the stator field okay the direction of the field that is 
with respect to this wire. Okay, from this wire, the direction of stator field is to that direction. Okay, and then we know that V is to that direction and current is out of the page using the right hand rule. Okay, using the right hand rule as it is shown below here. Using the right hand rule, we can, uh, we will understand that the right direction of the force, which is the thumb, thumb direction is to that direction, to this direction. Okay, so that is the force induced, F, I, N, D, 1. So that is the force induced, F, I, N, D, 1. Okay, so the force induced at the wire loop, which is current is supplied to this wire loop out of the page. And similarly, uh, if you go to the conductor number 2 here, which is, we know that using the right hand rule as well, the force will be induced at the conductor number 2 is to this direction, okay? The direction uh, pointing toward bottom, right? Bottom to a bit right, right? So, uh, because uh, at this wire loop, current is into the page. Okay, current is into the page, and similarly, uh, similarly for the B, how about B? So B is pointing to that direction. Okay, sebab B belah sini dia masukkan. B belah sini keluar daripada rotor. Okay, so from this side, B is from stator to rotor, okay. From the first segment, the first side, uh, B is from rotor to stator. Okay, so that is the direction of B, and then we know that uh, the direction of current using the right hand rule, and then we can uh, uh, determine the direction of F induced to or F into the force induced at this wire loop to uh, that direction okay so in that case we know that this rotor is rotating ccw counter clockwise direction so this rotor is rotating counter clockwise direction so we are going to uh, calculate the force that is induced in segment one or conductor number one and then once we get the force we can also uh, compute the torque, okay? Because uh, the torque is R cross F, right? So we are going to discuss on uh, basically my slides here. As you can see, is quite simplified. Eh? So in this uh, lecture note, I have shown you that I have done the sum calculation for conductor one. As you can see, for the conductor one. F in 1 equals to I L cross B, which is we, we used to use this uh, equation to uh, calculate induced force, right? F I L B, right? So we use F I L B. And then we know that since uh, B, which is the stator magnetic field, or the plug density, as you can see in the previous slides, in the slide before which is b is bs sine alpha so we can just uh, substitute uh, b in this equation so the induced torque at conductor number one sorry the induced force at the conductor number one is i l b s sine alpha okay i l b s sine alpha and then the torque induced in conductor number one since we have already got the force then we can calculate torque all right using equation of r cross f so r cross f we know that uh, from here for example uh, if this is the force and this is r okay they are perpendicular to each other so we can just uh, directly uh, substitute all of the values which is f i l b s sine alpha times r okay so we get the torque induced so this is the torque induced at conductor one okay so this is the torque induced at conductor one 
Similarly, we can do the same calculation for uh, the torque induced at conductor number 2. Okay, at the conductor number 2, uh, direction of the force is to that direction. Okay, F, I, N, D, 2. For this one, direction is to that direction. Sorry, not that direction. That direction, okay. F, I, N, D, 1. So, for conductor number 2, similarly, we can use the same equation. The, the force induced will be equals to IL cross B juga. And then we get IL B S sine alpha. We substitute this B with this uh, stator magnetic field, which is B S sine alpha. And then... From that, uh, we can also calculate the torque, which is R cross F, R cross F. So we get R I L B S sine alpha. So we have the torque induced at conductor number one and the torque induced at conductor number two. So we can just add it together because uh, the direction of the force. We know that this this rotor is moving counterclockwise direction which is uh, the force the tangential value which is the force at this side is added eh, to the force at the other side okay so it is an addition lah it is an addition kalau tak kalau terbalik uh, rotor ni tak akan berpusing right so the force F1 plus F2. So, similarly for the torque, which is torque at the conductor number 1 plus the torque at the conductor number 2. Then we can uh, further calculate, eh? which is we get 2 RIL BS sine alpha. So, this is total torque. Huh? P-I-N-D. Total torque that is induced because of the force acting on that on that uh, particular rotor okay so this is the force the sorry this is the torque okay and then this rotor is rotating counter clockwise direction okay so we have established and understand we have discussed and understand that sort of uh, uh, the torque that is induced in a steam machine that can be represented using this equation. So the torque can be represented by using this equation, which is 2 RIL BL sine alpha. So this is the torque of a steam machine, eh? okay, which is almost uh, similar to the torque of the sorry to the voltage behavior of the steam machine, okay. So far, uh, we have discussed also on the voltage induced on the AC machine, which is uh, voltage induced is 2 RL BM omega M cosine omega MT, right? So this is the voltage induced, which is, as you can see, almost a similar uh, equation except for the omega because uh, induced voltage is subject to the to the uh, rotation rotational speed of the machine which is omega omega is uh, uh, mechanical speed okay mechanical speed which is actually uh, equals to electrical speed because of the 50 hertz of the frequency applied to the to the machine right and then we can assume that omega Omega M equals to Omega E equals to Omega in this case. So, for the torque, okay, the equation is 2 RL. 2 RL B as sine alpha. Okay, almost similar equation for the induced voltage and torque in this machine. So, now we are going to discuss on... Uh, we are going to relate, alright, between, actually at the end of this uh, section, 
by observing the behavior of uh, stator magnetic field and also the rotor magnetic field, we can uh, determine whether that machine is working as a machine or working as a generator. Okay, so that sort of thing we are going to establish from now onward. So basically, we have BS, which is the stator magnetic field, right? So we have BS as stator magnetic field and we know that BS uh, alpha is BS sine alpha. Okay, so it behaves like a sinusoidal function. So BS is stator magnetic field. How about the rotor magnetic field, which is BR? How about rotor magnetic field? Okay, so far we know that BS is stator magnetic field. How about rotor magnetic field, which is BR? Okay, because we know that uh, we also apply current not only to the stator part but also to the rotor part. So when we apply current to the rotor, of course, at the rotor, uh, also produce magnetic field. Okay. Rotor also produce magnetic field from this sort of uh, law. Okay, so I think everyone is know about this law, which is when we supply current to a wire. Let's say this is a wire. We supply current to a wire. What happen is a uh, magnetic field will be induced around that wire. Okay will be induced around that wire using this sort of uh, equation, equation, right? So, magnetic field will be induced when we supply wire to a... Sorry, when we supply current to a wire, okay? So, what we are going to establish here is we know that uh, from here, this is the wire at conductor number one, okay? I'm, I'm talking about rotor now. This is the wire at conductor. One. This is wire at conductor. Two. Okay. So this one is the wire at conductor one. The other one is the wire at the conductor two. We know that uh, this rotor winding, the current at conductor one is out of the pitch. Okay. Current at conductor 1 is out of the pitch. And then the current at the conductor 2 is into the pitch. The same thing that I have uh, discussed previously. right? Current at conductor number 2 is into the pitch. Alright. So, we know that... Uh, for that particular part, conductor 1, okay, if we do the right hand curve, okay, right hand curve, of course, if you like to know what is the direction of the induced magnetic field for that particular conductor, the conductor 1, we can use the right hand curve, genggaman tangan kanan, yeah? right hand curve. Uh, we use the right hand curve, which is something like this. So, from there, we know that this is the direction of the field, and that is, sorry, I use, I'm going to use another color, which is black. So, that is the direction of the current, right? Using the right hand curve. We know that around this conductor, conductor 1, suppose that, as you can see at the bottom figure here, bottom figure, I've drawn this, uh, for the conductor number 1, this is the conductor number 1, right? So, the direction of the magnetic field is counterclockwise direction, right? And then, for the other conductor, conductor number 2 here, which is into the page, the, using the right hand curve, we know that the direction of the the direction of the magnetic field is 
uh, clockwise direction. This is clockwise direction. So we can combine this uh, direction of resulting from the current flowing inside uh, conductor 1 and conductor 2. This is the HR, which is the magnetic field. HR is the, the magnetic field resulting from conductor number 1 and conductor number 2 for the rotor. Okay, so uh, as you can see in this figure, all right, I have redrawn this figure. Okay, so BR is to that direction. Lah. BR to which is the same to the direction of HR. Okay, and this is the representation of the rotor magnetic field. And the other one, BS, represents the stator magnetic field. Okay, so they are interact. BS and BR are interacting to each other because this is different direction of the voltage of BR and BS. And then we can say that the net B, B net, is uh, BR plus BS, right? So B net is BR plus B. S, which is uh, the vector, vector normal vector calculation, we get B net which is to that direction. As you can see in this figure, B net is to that direction lah. Uh, direction which is resultant from uh, adding B S to B R. Okay. So, so we know the direction of each of the a magnetic field of the rotor magnetic field, stator magnetic field, and vector of the B net. Okay, now what we are going to see is to relate in terms of angle. Okay, so we have the angle starting from this. This is start from zero degree, start from there, which is the reference. So Angle of alpha start from there, and alpha is revolving uh, counterclockwise direction. And we know that B net is to that direction, B S to that direction, and B R to that direction. So basically, what is the angle of this one? Okay. So that is angle gamma. Okay, that is angle gamma. We name this angle as gamma. So, uh, so what is gamma? Gamma is 180 degree minus alpha. Why do we get 180 degree minus alpha? Because uh, this angle, okay, if we draw a straight line from BS down from BS vector, we draw the lines down and we know that this angle is also alpha okay this angle also alpha so basically gamma is 180 degree minus alpha okay so you can have a check on the uh, trigonometric identities that sine 180 degree minus alpha is actually the same as sine alpha for example, if I take a number of alpha of uh, let's say 35 degree, meaning that sine 35 degree, meaning that sine 35 degree is equals to sine 180 degree minus 35. Minus 35, right? How much? Uh, I'm going to use the calculator to show you that to prove that sine alpha equals to sine 180 degree minus gamma. Uh, yes, uh, from this, eh, from here. So. Let's say we have a 180 degree minus 35 and it is 
145 right so let me just write 145 degree so if you can have a check on the calculator so sine 35 degree sorry uh, we start with sine 145 which is sine 145 if 0 0.5735 so this one 0 0.5735 There is a noise from the Is it the noise coming from my computer or somebody has not used? Okay, so uh Sine 145 degree is 0 0.5735. So is it the same as sine 45 degree? Sorry, sine 35 degree. Let's say 35 uh, sine, which is the same, right? Which is 0 0.5735. Okay, the same. So this one is also 0 0.5735. Meaning that, okay, uh, we can use this uh, expression letter to further relate some equations, all right? Okay, so we know that uh, sine alpha is equals to sine gamma. We know that sine alpha equals to sine gamma. Alright, and then another another thing that we are going to discuss here is the relationship between H and I. So, here HR is same direction to the BR, right? And then HR is proportional to the current magnitude. Let's say I have the current supplied to one wire, the magnetic field induced so magnetic field induced H here is proportional to the magnitude of current supply. So meaning that if I increase the current, meaning that for example, if I increase the current and also of course the magnetic field also will be increased. In, increase, right? And then let's say that we name a constant which is C, alright? So which is C is the proportionality constant. So we can relate this uh, equation as HR equals to CI, okay? Which is C is proportionality equation, sorry, proportionality constant. And then from our previous discussion that we know that the torque induced or at the rotor is 2 RI LBL sine alpha. Which is similarly, we can write this sine alpha also as sine gamma. Because we know that sine alpha equals to sine gamma as well. Okay. And then, uh, since some of the values here are constant, which is 2, uh, R is also constant. Okay. L is also constant. Meaning that 2 R L are constant we uh, uh, 2RL is constant so that constant is basically C okay represented by C okay so we can further uh, extend this equation to torque induced equals to ci i is not constant huh? ci bs sine alpha and then ci is actually hr right ci is actually hr and then we can further extend this equation the torque induced is k hr bs sine alpha which is k is another new constant 
because we want to relate the HR to CI. Okay. So we want to include HR here to represent CI. Then we put another constant which is K. Okay. So the torque induced is K HR BS sine alpha. All right. So the torque induced is K HR BS sine alpha or K HR BS sine gamma, which is the same. So which is the same because sine alpha is equals to sine gamma, right? So from there, uh, do you remember the vector product? Now we are going to talk on the vector product. So we have finished this. We have finished discuss this as well. And then uh, we have arrived to this KHRBS sine gamma, KHRBS sine alpha. Okay. So we have these two equation. If you can remember the relationship between the let me just uh, do some Google here. Uh, vector cross product, right? If you Google vector cross product, A, B, magnitude A times magnitude of B sine theta is A cross B. Okay? We have another example which is here also. A cross B means that A B sine theta. A dot B is A B cosine theta. Okay. So that's a lot of things we have discussed before. In, uh, for example, in mechanics also we have discussed about vector. Uh, the dot product of the vector and also the cross product. Cross product of the vector. So A cross B basically A B sine theta. A dot B is basically A B cosine theta. So in this case, uh, since this is the sine sinusoidal function, which is sine alpha or sine gamma, so we can relate between K H R and B S in this case. So basically, in that particular equation for the torque induced, we can relate this by using cross product. Okay cross product between KHR and BS. So the torque induced is the cross product between KHR and BS. Alright. So, and then we have this, uh, the first equation. So that is the first equation that you like to know. Sorry, uh, I just write it again. The first equation, which is the torque induced is KHR cross BS and then uh, we can further uh, extend this into uh, we, want, we would like to substitute HR to BR okay in this case so since BR equals to mu HR okay BR equals to mu HR so we rearrange this equation to HR equals to BR over mu then we can substitute this value this value of HR into the equation, into the past equation here, yeah? we substitute HR with BR now, which is BR over mu. So we, we have this sort of a uh, constant. This is capital K, right? So this is uppercase K. And another one is small k, lowercase. Okay, so I hope that you can uh, I hope that you can understand the representation of different k here, which is k uh, and k like this. So that is the small k. This is the capital K. Okay. So for capital K over mu. We uh, can represent this k over mu as small k, small k, 
to represent this uh, constant so which is this is another constant so we can further rewrite uh, the previous equation in terms of dr Okay, the last equation was, uh, the first equation was, was HR, uh, K besar HR, cross BS. The, the second equation is K kecil, okay, K, K, small K, BR cross BS. So, the torque induced, we can represent another equation here, K, BR cross BS. So, normally, this, this equation will be, will be commonly used in, in, in our uh, next discussion about to identify or to determine whether that machine is working as a motor or generator. Okay, so we have this second equation. And then we want to relate uh, to another uh, magnetic field which is B net. So now we want to relate to B net. Okay, the first equation was uh, the first equation was relating the HR. Okay, the second equation relating the BR the third one now we are going to consider the B net okay we want to include the B net into the equation uh, using this expression you, you know that from the vector calculation basically we can get B net as BS plus BR right and then from there we can uh, substitute in the previous equation which is uh, we substitute BR Alright, in this case, we substitute BR as B net minus BR. Sorry. We substitute to this equation. We substitute to BS, ah, bukan BR. We substitute to BS. Okay. So, this is BS. Alright. So, we substitute BS. Actually, let me just write again. BS here is B net minus BR, right? So, we substitute BS to the previous equation and then we get the vector cross product of KBR and B net minus BR, right? Then we can further expand this equation to... Uh, this is a normal vector calculation we can find this in mathematics in calculus for example uh, the lesson about vector uh, we can further expand this cross product of the vector all right into another equation which is kbr cross d net minus kbr cross br we know that for two same vector which is br and br the cross product Cross product of two same vector, two similar vector, two same magnitude, two same direction of the vector is zero. Remember, uh, for example, I have unit vector of I. I cross I is zero, right? If you learn engineering, you know that I unit vector cross another I of unit vector, which is I is the same vector, is zero. For the dot product of I is 1. Okay? So, in this case, the cross product of BR and another BR is 0. So, it means that uh, this particular uh, term is 0. So, when we expand this, finally, we get uh, the relationship of torque induced as KBR cross B net. So, finally, we get the torque induced as KBR cross B net. This is the third equation. Okay. So, we have all three equations. Let me flash back. Okay. The first equation is torque induced equals to KHR cross BS. So, this is this one we want to relate between HR and BS. Okay. The second equation was KBR cross BS. So, this one, we are going to use this equation to relate between BR and BS. And then, the third equation is KBR cross B net. Huh? BR and B net. So, uh, when we talk about uh, vector cross product, actually, uh, I think you should have some uh, knowledge, some understanding on the vector cross product, vector dot product. That is why we learn 
vector since our since your first year you have learned about vector i think in your uh, pre preliminary education i mean the matriculation also you have learned about vector okay so basically we can express this equation into a vector which is something like this okay if we have two cross vector if we have two cross vector of kbr and vnet here we actually can represent k is constant so we, we don't have to write it's, it's 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 normal to just ignore k term in this case we can uh, write it something like that okay if angle de delta between b net and br for example in this case between b net and br is angle delta we can use delta as cross product hmm? the cross product between b net and br and delta is there so meaning that we can uh, rewrite this as this equation okay k br b net sine delta why sign? Because it is the cross product. Huh? Because it is vector cross product. Okay. So, So we have done all of that equations, okay? Similarly, for this particular equation, okay, we can represent this torque induced. Let's say beta is the angle between BR and BS. So the torque induced for that case, for this case, is BR KBR BS sine beta lah. Okay, so that is how do we represent the cross product of the vector in terms of the equation. Now, we can use that three equations to understand the torque in a machine. Okay, so we want to understand the torque in a machine. Basically, uh, this is uh, the figure of example one. Okay, we are going to use the this equation to determine. To determine whether this machine is working as a motor or generator. So I have put the question here. Is this machine working as a motor or generator? Okay. We know that this machine is basically rotating counterclockwise direction. With this particular uh, representation of omega here. So with this omega, we know that this machine, this the rotor of this machine is rotating counter clockwise direction okay so how about uh, br how about bs okay now i'm going to ask, ask you which in which direction is the bs please have a look at this figure for the bs first so bs is in the in which direction the stator magnetic field. For this particular figure, example one, the BS in, in which direction? So to identify BS, basically we have we need to have a look at this uh, the wire, yeah, the wire wire uh, windings of the stator, which is this one is current is out of the page, this one current is out of the page, current is out of the page, and the other side here uh, current is into the page, this one current is into the page, the other one here is current into the page. So using the right angle, okay. Using the right angle, uh, let me just uh, use different color to represent the direction of B. 
BS. Okay. So using the right ankle, BS. Using the right ankle, BS is there. And then for this one, uh, the direction of BS is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Similar, similarly to this one, BS is counterclockwise. And then this one also, BS is counterclockwise. As you can see, the uh, net direction of BS now is if it, I can write here, which is to that direction. So this is BS. All right. So that is the net direction of BS. Why? Because using the right ankle, as you can see here, this is counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise direction. This is counterclockwise direction. All of this side of the stator field is counterclockwise direction, which is to that direction, right? Okay. Okay. So similarly for this uh, side, the direction of uh, BS is also to that direction. So the net direction of BS to that direction lah. How about rotor? Of course, rotor will follow the rotor. Uh, in this case, rotor magnetic field. Uh, I'm going to use another color. Uh, which color is? Never mind. I, I'm going to use the, the same color to that one. So BR is to that direction. Okay. BR follows the rotor direction. Okay. So, in this machine, this machine is rotating at omega, which is a uh, counterclockwise direction. Okay. But we, if we relate BR to BS, so the cross product will start from BR. All right. Uh, Let's just uh, see this equation. We start from BR cross BS. Okay. So BR cross BS. So please uh, have a look at the my drawings here. So let me just uh, use this light blue color. Okay. So we start from BR to BS. So BR cross BS. So BR cross BS meaning that the direction of the uh, torque, the torque direction, in this case is, in what direction? Clockwise direction. Alright? Clockwise direction, meaning that this machine, since the torque is clockwise direction, but the... Uh, The rotor uh, spinning in counterclockwise direction, as we can observe here, CCW for the rotation of the uh, rotor, but for the torque induced is clockwise direction, meaning that this machine is working as a generator or motor generator okay generator because uh, the torque is not the same direction to the original rotation of the rotor okay different direction meaning that this motor is working as a generator okay so uh, this is another example which is the rotor is uh, moving uh, to the counterclockwise direction which is the same as the previous uh, example but now as you can see the stator uh, current stator current is different direction to the previous uh, figure which is as you can see uh, this side current is out of the page right the other side current is into the page so similarly using the right ankle we can identify in which direction is the in which direction is the rotor magnetic field so in this case 
<coughs> using the right hand curl, the net direction of rotor magnetic field or BR is that direction. Okay, and then how about the uh, sorry, that is the stator. See? The net direction of the stator magnetic field is to that direction. How about the rotor? Okay, the rotor. So the rotor in this case is that direction. So this is BR. Okay. Okay, so BR is to that direction, BS to that direction. Now, is this machine working as a motor or generator? So we still can use the, the same equation. Torque induced is K BR cross BS. So we start from BR. Alright. So let me just use another color. So we start from BR to BS, BR cross BS, meaning that to the CCW. So, the torque induced for that particular rotor is counterclockwise direction, which is the same direction to the original rotation of the rotor, alright? Which is the original rotation of the rotor is also counterclockwise direction, right? CCW as well. So, since this rotor is uh, rotating counterclockwise direction and then the torque induced is also counterclockwise direction, we know that this machine is working as a motor. Okay? So, that is the uh, the thing that we can use when we uh, study when we know about the the, uh, the relationship between BR and BS in terms of vector cross product here okay actually we can use these three equation let me just uh, flashback okay we can use this particular equation the first equation relationship between the cross product of KHR and BS and also the cross product of KBR and BS okay and the other equation of the cross product between uh, KBR and the net so we can use these uh, three equations for example in this case we can use KBR and BS okay the cross product of KBR and BS to determine whether this machine is working as a generator or motor by observing the figure only, we can know that uh, this machine is working as a gener generator or, or the motor. For example, number one here, this machine is working as a generator because the torque induced is counter uh, is clockwise direction, while the rotor is actually moving to the counterclockwise direction. Okay. Similarly, for another example, example number two. We can say that this machine is working as a motor because uh, when we uh, use BR cross BS, we know that the torque induced is counterclockwise direction, meaning that uh, since this rotor is also moving to the counterclockwise direction, which is the same direction of the torque, uh, we can say that this machine is working as a motor. All right. So I think uh, I have al already covered all of the sections in uh, topic 3 about AC machinery. All of this uh, section covered in this topic 3 is actually, uh, actually the uh, basic which is the fundamental of AC machinery. So, for more details on the AC machines, uh, if you like to do some thesis of example, if you write, 
you would like to write the thesis uh, to go more advanced to the study about estimationary you may refer to the uh, our textbook by chapman's chapman's or because in chap uh, in this uh, course basically we are, we are not going to cover all of the syllabus in chapman's book but we just cover on the particular uh, fundamental based or uh, Topics uh, related to Chapman's. So, up to this time, we have finished all of the sections in topic 3. So, from uh, our next meeting, from next meeting on uh, Wednesday, we'll, I'll be talking about another new topic. Okay, we maybe a brief uh, introduction to topic four, which is DC machinery fundamental. So I'll be talking about that uh, topic later in our next meeting. So in this meeting, in this session, uh, I'm going. I think I'm going to finish earlier today. If 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 you don't have any questions, uh, so we're going to finish. Uh, so is there any question? Ada tak soalan nak tanya untuk uh, topik 3 ni? Anything about assessment, uh, about uh, assignment letter, also you can ask. Ada soalan tak nak tanya? Kalau tak ada soalan, uh, saya nak habiskan uh, kuliah ini, perjumpaan kita pada hari ini sehingga masa ni lah, hingga 9.40 sekarang ni. Ada soalan tak? Ada orang tak? Ada. Nah, ada orang. Yeah. <laughs> ada orang. So tak ada? Tak ada soalan. Yasmin tak ada soalan. Kalau ada soalan. Ada tak? Ah, uh, kalau nak kalau malu nak tanya sini ya uh, personal tax ah. Uh. Ramai je orang personal tax tu sebenarnya. Uh, uh, ada je yang WhatsApp saya tengah-tengah malam pun ada WhatsApp. Kalau saya sempat saya jawablah. So kalau tak ada soalan so kita habis dekat sini sajalah untuk uh, topic 3 and next meeting kita akan discuss on topic 4 which is the final topic i hope that we can finish all of the syllabus within within uh, uh, week 10 i guess we can finish all of the syllabus before we proceed on the another discussions on assessment assessments assess we discuss on the assessment questions past year questions Okay, more tutorials coming later. Okay, so uh, I think finish now. Okay, so thank you. We'll see you again on Wednesday, okay? Okay, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Bye, Doctor. Bye. Thank you, Doctor.